Well, if you guys haven't heard, I bought a $900 classic truck with a ton of rust on it. In this episode, we're gonna tackle this cowl area, get this sealed off, so we can get a little bit closer to drop it in that drivetrain. So this is what this pile looks like. It is a disaster. Yeah, this is all split. I got a couple ideas on how we're gonna fix this. So it looks like this has been patched before. I'll cut it right in here. It's gonna be a least amount of welding. And take out all these spot welds, get this knocked out then basically cut this whole area out. We're gonna take this piece off. I have some pieces here that I'm gonna use and also for the inside cowl. We're just gonna try to cut up a bunch of this stuff and use it in there. Whatever can't be cut up, we'll just have to hand fabricate. Hello? Well, somebody's been in here before because that's not normal. Man, there's a lot of rust here. Holy moly, this whole piece is garbage. Yeah, that's not supposed to be there. None of that. Look at this. I can't believe what I'm about to do. <laughs> this is not how I wanted this to go. This panel is being held on by half an inch of rusty metal right here. And then there's some kind of tar material, maybe seam sealer with some kind of house drywall tape. I, I don't know. Once I cut that, which is, it's not even metal. Like I said, it's some kind of filler. Watch this. Yeah, so here we are. Hey, I'm gonna drop a engine and trans in this thing in a week and start driving it. <laughs> yeah, right. This is my life right now. Houston, we have a problem. I think this kind of got away from me just a little bit. I mean, at this point, as much as I don't want to do it, I think I'm going to have to pull the door off and we're just going to lop this whole piece off and replace a good chunk of this whole piece with that piece behind me because I guess we're at the point of no return. Yeah, this is how rusty this thing is. I've got washers exploding into multiple pieces. Maybe I should stop while I'm ahead. Nah, that's not me. I swear, I'm gonna put a motor in this thing in like a week and we're gonna drive it, was what I originally said. I'm at the point where I'm about to cut this section out. So I already braced the cab. That way, if this dips down a little bit, it's gonna stay intact where it's supposed to be. So I have this cowl area that I pulled off a 69 or 70 C10 from the junkyard that was originally supposed to be for that truck. Now, if you guys wanna see that video, I'll pop a link right there. You can check that out. The reason why the doors are sagging when you open them is when all that weight's there, this whole piece is moving. So then you gotta pull up on the door and put it back in. Both sides are the same. Let's lop this piece off and then we'll get this fitted and hopefully get it welded in place today. One last thing before I cut into this thing. So I made a ton of measurements all the way around this entire piece and the bottom section. You can kind of see the scribe line that is pretty close where it needs to be. I definitely got to say this is a little nerve wracking, just a little bit. As far as all of this junk goes, I'm not even going to worry about it right now. This can be dealt with at another time. This is not a full restoration like I said before. You guys want to see that, you guys got to check out my 71 truck. Take a deep breath, you're about to cut the eight pillar. <laughs> Wow, well that's something I never thought I would see in my garage. Oh yeah, check this out. This is pretty solid, huh? Wild, wild stuff. All right, we're gonna have to trim this down a little bit. Why do I do these things to myself? Hey, we're just gonna kind of like fix it up a little bit. Oh yeah, let's just rip apart half the truck. <laughs> Trucks are fun. My plan was originally to weld this piece to this piece, but this piece is held on by three screws basically. I took a ton of measurements from here to here, from here to there. Not the most ideal from the top of this down to the floor. I'm just gonna lop this thing off because honestly I need to cut a little bit further down. I, I don't even have the stability to cut this thing. That's the easiest A-pillar uh, removal I've ever had to deal with. Well, this is fitting pretty decent. This still needs to move up. This is just tacked in for the meantime. Kind of messed up a little bit over here, so I gotta do something about that. You can really see how much metal is missing, you know, all in that area. So yeah, tonight I'm gonna spend some time trying to, you know, kind of weld up some of these areas from some of the spot welds. And hopefully by tomorrow, I'll have all this mocked up, ready to go, and we can burn it in, and then we can start on the other side. Okay, so here we are. This is kind of crudely welded in. 
held in by three screws like it was originally. Haha, <laughs> yeah. That needs to be welded in tomorrow. And I made the executive decision to basically cut this cowl because I, I mean, you can tell there's just, it's just, no. Well, I've been zapping away. I got all this burned in. I got this little air burned in. Now I'm working on all the rosette welds that are gonna hold these two panels in place. I got this down here, kind of crudely welded. And this thing is pretty sturdy. I mean, that thing's not going anywhere even if it only is held on by three screws down here. I'm gonna continue on. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off this brace, put the door back on just to make sure that everything fits, which I probably should have done when I only had it tack welded, but I'm pretty confident we are exactly where we need to be because I took a ton of measurements. And it also helps that I have a 1971 truck right there that I can pull measurements off of too. A Couple hours later, this is where we're sitting. Got this piece all done, all ground down. And I rosette welded the lip there for the cowl to dash. And now I get to do the fun part of closing off all these holes. I have these copper backers that I'm gonna be using, so it should make life a little bit easier. So in a perfect world, what I would do is I would actually put a new piece of metal in there, but this is my roadkill vehicle. If you guys wanna see the restoration, boom, it's over there. Also, if you guys are curious about any of the tools that I use, check out the description. The best way to tackle this is take a step bit, drill the rusty area out, and then transfer that onto a piece of steel, cut it out, and then just weld that. Some of these I just kind of tried to fill in, but there's so little metal there because of the rust, you end up just blowing out a gigantic hole. So do yourself a favor, save yourself some time, drill it, cut it out, weld it. As far as dealing with all of this missing firewall section, my buddy just replaced the firewall on his truck. So I'll be able to use this piece to kind of make it all work. I got that area wrapped up as much as it's gonna be for now, and I'm gonna work on the center section. So we're gonna pull this piece off, and then we're gonna to try to do some repairs on the actual cowl. All right, let's get cutting. So there's a lot of goop through here, so we're just gonna to have to take the saws on, just hack all this away. Oh, this is definitely real special over here. So now the biggest question, which I guess I answered for myself right now, is how bad is this piece? These tend to rot out. This one is no exception, and I do have another one, so I might actually have to dig into this a little bit. Eh, it is what it is. It's part of the game. Well, I'm gonna keep whittling away because the compressor just turned out I gotta yell. So once I dug all of that out, this is what it revealed. Yeah, no wonder the booster moves. <laughs> so yeah, we kind of already knew that was gonna be messed up from the other side, but. Oh yeah, and check out this piece. Let me show you what that's actually supposed to look like. Yeah, total difference, right? So I don't think I have much of a choice. I'm gonna have to pull the rest of this outer cowl out. So I'm gonna grind out all these spot welds and we're probably gonna have to do some repair work here. Well, that was fun. I got all this junk cut out, so yeah, that's not supposed to look like that. Obviously, that's not supposed to look like that. So once again, I'm gonna harvest some metal from this panel. So here's the game plan. I wish I could actually knock out all the spot welds and then just put this whole piece in there. But the way I ended up drilling this to, because I wasn't planning on really keeping this piece, I was mainly trying to keep the outer cowl, I ended up drilling the spot welds from the back. So that's why there's all these horrendous holes. So I'll probably cut it right around here, run this over kind of where that ant's going, <laughs> go up above, and then I kind of want to somehow salvage this hump because as you can tell, that doesn't exist at all over there. So we might have to metal work some stuff. I already bent the lip back, so that looks pretty nice. So yeah, let's get this thing in there, and then we can finish up this spot, and then we'll put the outer cowl on and hopefully put the truck back together, put an engine in, and drive it! Well, plans changed a little bit, so this is what we got going now. I'm thinking about keeping this, so then I can bolt the, I believe it's the either the dashboard or part of the booster assembly to this, so that would kind of line it up exactly kind of where it needs to be. I mean, this isn't really like crucial here, but you know, I still want to get it pretty close to where it's supposed to be. But for now, I'm going to just start slowly 
cutting away, trimming, and trying to get this thing to fit a little bit deeper in. I went in to fill in all these spots. As you remember, it was all ripped apart. So I figured the best thing I could do is just draw out a hole, make a little plug for it, weld the plug in. So I have a ton of plugs I gotta make, probably at least 20, if not more. Work smarter, not harder, let me explain. So as far as these plugs go, I could hand cut every single one of these and we're gonna be here all freaking night. I decided to make a tool. Now, of course you can buy stuff like this, but I just wanted to use stuff that I had around the shop. That way I have no extra expense. Biggest issue, and this is actually a wood bit obviously, but that's how big the bit was. So if I wanna drill that hole, I mean, that's, that's gonna be huge. So I needed to put a smaller drill bit in there. So this is what I did. I took, a small fuel line, then took a small brake line, and then I took a eighth inch bit. You see where I'm going with this? And right now I'm gonna take all this apart and I'm gonna make this actually a permanent tool. And I'm gonna just throw a little bit of weld right in there. This will be solid. The holes that I'm drilling are 11 16 This is a 7 8 hole saw. The original bit was a quarter inch and then the new bit is eighth inch. But with how small that hole is, I should have no issues putting just one bead of weld in there to seal that up. You know the saying, I cut it two times and it's still too short? Yeah, that's just what I'm kind of working on right now. Obviously there's a, a gap here and there used to be a gap there. You can kind of see where I still got some spot welds where I got to grind down. But yeah, I'm gonna zap this in. This area is for the most part mocked up. So the next thing I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna start dealing with this awful lip. Okay, so what is the plan with this panel? I'm gonna use a lot of this panel, at least this lip and this area that really just does not even exist on there. So for now, I'm gonna cut this into three pieces. I'm gonna start with lopping it off somewhere around here. I wish I could kind of use this, but this is for an AC system. You can see that the holes are a little bit different and this is for a non-AC. So I'm not gonna be able to use the whole piece. I'll probably have to cut it all through here somewhere. And then as far as this bottom section, it's actually a little bit nicer, especially looking at that piece. What I'll probably do is I'll Try to cut it through here somewhere and use a good portion of the green panel. That is the plan for tonight. Try to get this cut up and try to kind of mock this up a little bit. And then we'll deal with the center section and then we'll deal with the booster because that booster is completely wrong. There should be a bracket sticking off of it. That's for another day. Well, fast forward into the future and I haven't really been working much on the truck. Spoiler alert, I bought a farmhouse with a 50 by 50 foot barn and three car garage. This has been kind of on the back burner, but I have done a lot since the last time, since like 10 seconds ago when, when you guys were you know watching the lap. Yeah, so check this out. I have cut this up even more. So as you remember, I used to have a floor of a road closed sign. Last night I threw some self etching weld through primer on there and on this lip, I kind of started briefly mocking up that lip a couple weeks ago. This piece is ready for the most part, to get tacked in place. But I still have to touch up a little bit down there, but I figure I'm gonna get this all tacked in, at least along this seam, and then we'll uh, go from there. Okay, it's in place with a couple tacks. Very floppy. So now I'm going to get this sitting where it's supposed to be, then I'll address this, and I still have to cut a little bit down here and then I'm gonna start working on this center section. So that's just a piece that I cut out. I haven't cut any of the actual blue original truck out yet. So that's gonna be the plan for tonight. Well, with working on the farmhouse and working on remodeling a bathroom, I barely have time to work on this thing, but I've been putting in a couple days uh, after work, trying to get this thing kind of squared away. It's five weeks away from drag week. And my plan was to take this thing and uh, I'm still trying but man there's still so much work i got that whole area fitted it's ready for weld i gotta move things once i start kind of welding but it's fitting pretty good so at this point i need to remove this booster because that booster actually has a bracket so this fantabulous bracket is actually supposed to go in between the booster and the firewall which uh, this one is getting held on and spaced out by a ton of washers. So I have to remove this because I have to gain access to this whole dirty, ugly lip of a firewall. 
and then we'll take care of this once that's welded in we'll take care of the corner we'll put the top of the cowl on and we can start focusing on the trans and the engine and the windshield and the rear end and oh geez and the oh how is this even possible in five weeks when i don't have time that's the thing if i had all the time in the world that's it'd be done but having to bounce around between a new farmhouse having to finish a bathroom, having to work on this, having to work. It's rough, but we're getting it done. Well, it's the next night and things are growing great. No, they're not. It, this thing's torn apart even more than it should be, but it is what it is. I had to do it. So steering column's out, all the pedals are out, the booster's off. After a quick inspection, I noticed that this was really hogged out and this is really butchered. So I'm planning on using a good section of this firewall, mainly because there's this brace in here. So I'm gonna cut along here. Boom, grab this whole piece, stick it on there, and hopefully start on this corner section, and then we can kind of start working on other stuff. 